In this video, I'm going to show you how you can turn your 3D printer into a filament extrusion monster by replacing your poultry 0.4 millimeter nozzle with this one millimeter nozzle, which I created by literally drilling it out with a one millimeter drill bit. I last tested this nozzle in 2017 on the Raze N2 Plus and had interesting and promising results, but I've since switched printers and tweaked slicer settings and since discovered it's capable of some pretty incredible things and a few less than incredible things. Let's get started. This is the CR10 V2, which I reviewed not too long ago. And in that review, I mentioned how I think it's just a little bit silly to have a printer with such a huge print volume, but still fit it with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. This is great for detailed models, but honestly, I don't have the patience to wait literally days for a large print to complete. That's just far too long for something to go wrong, in my opinion. So at the end of that review, I tried a few prints using the one millimeter nozzle and the results were very promising indeed. And it got me thinking, what applications could a nozzle like this lend itself to? What are its benefits and limitations? Large nozzles are capable of pushing way more material through than their smaller counterparts, which translates to chunkier layer heights and a much reduced print time. And this has been covered by myself and many others countless times before, but look, there's obviously trade-offs to print quality, right? Well, it turns out it's a bit more complicated than that. My first challenge though was to dial this nozzle in because I hand drilled it. So the diameter isn't exactly one millimeter. You can just buy one millimeter nozzles, but here we are. So what I did is I slowly extruded some filament to figure out what it was closer to and came up with 0.95 millimeters. And it's here that I encountered my first obstacle. You see, I went to the latest Cura, which is 4.3 at the time of recording, and I couldn't enter a custom nozzle size. The option was just gone. There was discrete sizes to choose from, sure, but I had to go back to Cura 4.0 to enter the 0.95 millimeter manually. This is kind of weird and I would love to be wrong here. And if I am and you can enter a custom size in 4.3, please let me know. Uh, it's probably already outdated by now, but yeah, at the time of filming, I just used 4.0. And these are the settings I settled on. 0.6 millimeter layer heights with a wall thickness of 1.9 millimeters. So a pretty chunky, thick extrusion width, but my intention here is to reduce the number of perimeters required to get strong prints. This means a benchy goes from taking about an hour to print at normal, reasonable person settings to 15 to 20 minutes. Um, and you can probably get it even quicker. And this is what the results look like. Definitely chunky, but the overall shape still forms pretty nicely, surprisingly so. Also this clear red PLA totally looks like hard candy and I totally want to eat it. This Gaia Anderson cat similarly prints in about an hour versus the what, five to seven hours it normally takes at 0.15 layers. But unfortunately, our first major limitation of a nozzle this chunky reveals itself here. Support material kind of doesn't work that well. Now, it can work, but your interface and support itself will be nowhere near as easy to remove as with a smaller nozzle, and it will waste a heap more filament than a typical 0.4 millimeter nozzle. I was pretty amazed that it failed here and then somehow recovered right at the end, but I think there was some good luck on my part. This filament, by the way, is really interesting. It's a matte black PLA from Monocure here in Australia, link in the description below. It definitely does print with a matte finish, which I haven't seen very often, although it does seem to vary in terms of its matteness depending on temperature, because yes, you'll be working your hot end very hard with thick extrusions like this, and it'll be your main limiting factor for print speed. So a volcano style hot end is ideal for a large print nozzle, but it's not strictly required. Just reduce your print speed to taste. I also just had to make this comparison in print quality between the one millimeter nozzle and this much smaller print of the Gaia Anson Cat done on the Epax X1 resin 3D printer. So if you want print quality, you won't find it here. That's for sure. All right, next I wanted to try this low poly mask. So imagine a scenario where you're invited to a fancy dress party, but it's tomorrow. So you have to whip up something fast. And this print only took an hour to complete in Abyss Polyalchemy Elixir filament. Yeah, that's pretty fast. Overall, it'll do the job, but some areas are a lot better than others. Um, some areas are a bit spiky as well. And this print does a good job revealing another two issues you'll encounter with large nozzle diameters. One, where the nozzle jumps between points, it leaves imperfections 
uh, which normally probably wouldn't be hard to notice on a smaller nozzle, but really do stand out here. And some overhangs start to become too much for the step over at 0.6 millimeter layers. Now I did discover this issue when experimenting with vase mode printing years ago, and I found you can get away with steeper overhangs by either lowering your nozzle height or increasing your extrusion width further, or both, but both of these will slow down your print time, which kind of defeats the point of doing this. I do find the eye and mouth slots interesting though, because they were both printed basically over thin air, and they still managed to mostly work, which is pretty interesting considering the cooling is also a challenge when extruding so much molten plastic. I was sharing my big nozzle print results on Twitter at Makers Muse, and that's where Wellbot gave me a horrible slash brilliant idea to 3D print the hairy line model, but with this obscene nozzle and layer height. Now, I do want to mention, despite his Twitter handle, he's actually not going too well at the moment. And I hate to see a pillar of the Australian 3D printing community suffer. So be sure to check out Wellbot's 3D models he's got hosted on Gumroad, as well as some other great prints from Ivan, and consider grabbing some cool prints and chucking some coin his way to help him out. Now, I don't do this very often, but no one deserves to suffer due to medical expenses. Anyway, for those who don't know, the Hairy line took the 3D printing community by storm in 2017. It was originally based off a low poly model by 3DWP, which was then smoothed by Jeff and finally modified by Primos to have this clever structure surrounding it. So when you cut away the outer cylinder, you're left with this thin extrusions of plastic that you can then form into hair using a hot air gun. And in the case of this giant one by Joel Telling over at 3D Printing Nerd, took almost 100 hours to print. Because of the way it's designed, the layer height used to print the hairy line is critical as it has to align with the thin extruded strands of hair properly so they're properly reproduced. So I grabbed the small version designed for a 0.2 millimeter layer height and scaled him to 300%. So now we have a line designed to work at 0.6 millimeter layers, but with a one millimeter nozzle, no one to my knowledge has tried it so far. So let's find out. Much to my surprise, it seemed to work for the most part, but with such a huge amount of material being laid down, the supporting ring around the model struggled a little to form, and I did notice some of the hairs were failing. Each hair is actually two extrusions, one from the line to the outer ring, and then one back. And often on the return, the string of filament would fail to adhere to both sides. This is probably due to a number of factors like not enough extrusion overlap and slicing paths somewhat breaking down at such ridiculous extrusion widths, but would you believe it, it actually completed. With such chunky hairs, using a Stanley knife to cut the line free was out of the question, so I patiently snipped the line free of its cage, and yeah, talk about a bad hair day. The hairs which failed to adhere were easy enough to remove though, and for the moment of truth, can its mane be tamed with a hot air gun, just like the designer intended. Yep, sure can. It did take a lot more heat and convincing, but here he is. The hairy line printed at 0.6 millimeter layer heights and a one millimeter nozzle, and the total print time was just over seven hours. That's pretty quick. Chunky FGN models have a certain aesthetic to them that I really think is complementary for many applications, especially where speed and strength is paramount, but it's clearly not for everything. The quality sacrifice is severe to say the least. But yeah, for sheer speed and strength, you really can't do much better and I encourage you to try it. For good success, I would choose models which don't need support material and can be printed with large extrusion paths that don't require the hot end to jump around points too much and watch your overhangs as they can quickly reach the limits that these large layers are capable of self-supporting. And obviously these prints destroy your filament quickly, so be sure to have a lot on hand. Also of note, as I was putting this video together, Stefan over at CNC Kitchen did a really scientific test comparing prints with large nozzles to prints with a regular size nozzle, but the equivalent wall thickness and found the strength was much the same, which I did find really quite interesting. 
Now I have a few more ideas on how to use this chunky nozzle, so hit that subscribe button if you don't want to miss it. If you want to make this music as my aim to empower your creativity through technology, even if it's by doing ridiculous tests like this one, there's always something new to learn. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later guys, bye.